Hello, this is Jim, W4JBM, and I uh, want to do a quick video on uh, the GM328 component tester and specifically how it measures capacitors. I've seen the question come up a couple times, seen a couple different answers, uh, and actually the answer is a little more complex than, uh, uh, than you might think. Right now I've got a uh, uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor uh, put into the zero insertion force socket. Uh, you can also connect it. There's three test points uh, that are on the pins in the zero insertion force or zip uh, socket. Uh, then there's also three test points, the same three test points over here that you could use some other kind of connector to solder it to. Basically, we put the, the capacitor in, we push the button, the GM328 goes through some self-test and start up, and then it tells us that this is uh, 105 nanofarads, which is basically 0.1 uh, microfarads, and it gives us some inter uh, other information about uh, the the loss in the capacitor and the ESR, which are um, more complex topics also. So, so how does it measure? How did it get to that uh, 0.1 microfarads? And if we hooked an oscilloscope up to this uh, to to watch what it's doing, um, first off, let's talk a little bit about what's in uh, the the device itself. Uh, that the allows us to do all this to, to even begin with. So the microcontroller uh, has the ability, it's got some, they're, they're called tri-state gates. Basically a tri-state gate can be either um, at zero, it can be at one, uh, or it can be open and floating. Uh, so there's some tri-state gates that are controlled by the microcontroller that let us connect to either zero volts or five volts. Uh, any of the three test points, and I've just referred generically to TP test point uh, here, and I can go straight out uh, of the tri-state, and if I do that, there's actually a little bit of resistance in here. There's around 22 ohms of resistance, 20 to 22 ohms of internal resistance associated with that. I can also uh, go through one of two resistors that I, I select. There's a, a 470 ohm resistor and a 680 ohm resistor, uh, each associated with each test point. Actually, these resistors along here uh, are those resistors. There's two resistors for test point one, two for test point two, two more for test point three. So uh, I can pick any of those resistors uh, and go through them and come out at the test point. Um, then I can, at, from the test point, I can uh, also connect that same test point over back into the microcontroller uh, and there's two different ways of measuring or telling what's going on there and we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. So let's talk about charging a uh, capacitor just in kind of theory generically first off. If we've got a voltage source and we're feeding it through some resistance and then the capacitor when we close the switch, we see a, a curve uh, as things start to charge. And there's a thing called tau, or the time constant, which is uh, the resistance times the capacitor. And if you multiply ohms times farads, it actually works out uh, unit-wise to be seconds. Uh, so the, based on the size of the, the resistor that we were feeding through over here and the capacitor that we were um, charging, so I've got a capacitor here. So we've got a, a known resistance, we've got a known capacitance, the microcontroller we can set to five volts, and we've charged that, uh, and we can watch it, basically watch the same curve develop uh, across the capacitor that we're testing. Uh, what happens if you, uh, if you were to watch this on the oscilloscope, uh, you've got voltage, and time, and there would be this the charging curve that we we talked about, and actually at around 1.1 volts, the curve stops. Um, so this part up in here really doesn't ever happen. And the reason that we get to this 1.1 volt is that the, you know, there. There's a device called a comparator in the, the microcontroller that's connected to the test point. So a comparator, it's simplified, it, it tells you if you're above or below some voltage reference that you're feeding into one pin. So you've got one pin that's coming in, and that's your, your input voltage, the one you're evaluating. You've got some reference voltage that you're comparing it against. And if you are above that voltage, uh, typically this would swing positive if you're above the voltage and negative if you're below the voltage, although you can reverse that uh, if, if that's what you want to do. So 
On the microcontroller, this comparator also feeds into a, uh, an interrupt and basically wakes the microcontroller up and, and says something's happened. So um, what we can do, you know, in, again, in oversimplified terms, we've got a voltage source, we apply it through a resistor, we start charging the capacitor, the microcontroller waits until the comparator triggers and says, you've hit uh, the 1.1 volts. That reference voltage comes from inside, there's actually a band gap reference inside the, uh, the 328 microcontroller. Uh, so this is internal, it's not an external zener or anything like that. Uh, so this 1.1 is really, it's, it's fixed. And we know that uh, when we get to 1.1, we'll we'd be able to come down here and we'd be able to calculate, uh, this is going to be some number of seconds. And based on that number of seconds, we can work backwards. We know that this on the, the voltage on the capacitor is uh, 1.1 out of a 5 volt charging voltage. We know the resistor is uh, one of the two, either the 680 or the, the uh, 470. And uh, we know the time in seconds down here. So given all that, we can backwards calculate the capacitance. So uh, basically, we've, we've plugged the capacitor in and uh, we've been able to, to charge it up. Uh, got it to 1.1 volts and we've seen it uh, uh, trigger the comparator and we backwards calculate all that and life is good. So that, that works, I mean that's pretty reasonably straightforward. Um, and this is again, it was a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. The, the problem is with that approach that this scale down here, or if we look back more generically, just at the, the capacitor in general, the scale is, uh, it, it's a linear function of the size of the capacitance. So this is a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. If I take a 4.7 microfarad capacitor, that's a capacitor that is 47 times larger, it is gonna take 47 times as long to reach some given point on this curve. Uh, so instead of, I mean, if I'm testing this in a second, this is going to take 47 seconds uh, to charge to that same level, uh, which is, I mean, maybe you could live with that, but if we go much, much larger, uh, this is a uh, 2,200 uh, microfarad capacitor. So this one is going to take 22,000 times as long to charge up as uh, as the point one so obviously uh at that point you start running into issues of uh i don't know what how many 2200 uh seconds works out to be but uh, uh and, and the seconds is just an approximation also but i mean this starts getting to test this using that same approach um you're talking about uh minutes and, and potentially even hours and there's there are capacitors like 100 microfarad uh is not that unusual today you might run into that uh in something like a switching power supply or something so some fairly large capacitors out there um and that means that you can't uh, obviously if i uh, if i take this capacitor i put it into the zero insertion force socket i push the button uh it goes to the self-test and test the component and measures that uh, it's actually coming out at uh, a little over 2,000 microfarads that did not take uh, take minutes and minutes. Uh, again, it, the the time there was, uh, and actually the time specified. If you read the specifications, uh, it says the average test time is around two seconds for for any type of component you might connect to this. So um, that's. Uh, basically what that tells us is that there's got to be a different approach that's being used when we, we measure this. And in fact, if we look at this, and I've, uh, I've spent some time uh, digging into the, the history of where some of the, the code firmware that, that is in the uh, GM328 came from, uh, some magazine articles and, and uh, some, uh, some code that's flowing around on the, the internet that uh, was the genesis, kind of the, the basis for this. Uh, you can see here I've got a, a wire uh, soldered in on the ground. That's because I was watching the pins uh, to measure different things. If we, if we look at the waveform on this with uh, an oscilloscope, what we will see is something that, that is similar but, but different. Um, we see it at some point start to go up that same uh, curve. And you know, again, this is, this is the, the, the charging curve of the, uh, uh, of the capacitor. And about 1.5 seconds out, it, uh, it actually stops charging 
So the rest of this curve does not happen, like I did on the other one over there. This does not happen. And we can come back. Uh, actually, to stay consistent, this should have been a, uh, a dashed line. Uh, but we can come back from, you know, this is, uh, we know this. Um, kind of like we knew this over here. Uh, now, though, we take this into the analog to digital converter, and we get a voltage. So we get some kind of, over here now, we... We, we can measure um, volts. So we come back with some kind of voltage. So now we've got sim the similar equation. We know the resistance. We know that, that we were charging through. Uh, we know the time. It was fixed at 1.5 seconds. Um, uh, so we've got voltage, resistance, time. That gives us everything we need to do to, to back calculate to capacitance. So we can, can use that uh, and, and get a, a fairly accurate reading. Um, so there's basically two different approaches that are used. Now, one question you might have is why, why do I have to use two different approaches? Why can't I just use one approach? Well, the, the problem is that um, I use a highlighter, which probably isn't going to show up the greatest. But if I had taken this uh, 2000 microfarad capacitor and used this approach over here, this line, and this is not, not to scale at all, but um, uh, this line might look something like uh, like this. Actually, it'd be much uh, there'd be much less slope to it. It'd actually be uh, you know even uh, uh, the larger the capacitance, the the lower this line would be. Uh, but getting to this 1.1, 1 .1, all of a sudden we start looking at those the, you know the, the thousands of seconds. So why not always use this approach where we we charge it for 1.1 1 .1 second or 1.5 seconds and then measure it? Well, if I have a really small capacitor, what this curve is going to look like is something like that. Um, and you know depending on like a a little bit larger capacitor might be there. A really small capacitance, like when we talk about uh, a few picofarads may charge almost instantaneous uh, with respect to, to the 1.5 seconds that we're, we're measuring. So we wouldn't be able to, <clears throat> there's some limit that uh, we have to be on a curve that is continuing to grow. In, in other words, we can't, uh, if, we're, if we're up here above 2 tau, 2 times the time constant, uh, or something, we, we start losing, on, on this, we really have started losing accuracy. Um, by 4 or 5 tau, you're basically 105%, 100% uh, charged. I think 4 tau is uh, around 98%, and 5 tau is 99 point something percent. So basically, you're fully charged after that. So these smaller capacitors, we can't do it um, because of that. Uh, so now the question, I guess, kind of comes down to, okay, I've got, uh, I've got the tester, and the tester, when I push the button, uh, it figures out, how does it know which of those two curves it's going to use? And if I put in something kind of middle of the road, like the 4.7, um, you know, how does it know which, whether to use the, uh, the approach where it's, it knows the voltage, it goes to a known voltage, and then we, we measure seconds, or it goes for a known number of seconds and we measure voltage. Uh, so if we were to look at the, the waveform uh, going even further back uh, before we get to, to this point where we're actually measuring the capacitance itself, there's actually a lot of stuff that's going on that the tester is doing. Uh, the tester, you know, for example, this uh, the capacitance that we're seeing, it may be from a reverse bias diode or a, ver a vericap or something of that sort. Uh, so just because we see a capacitance does not mean what we are testing is a capacitor. In fact, if I, uh, if I checked a, a transistor or something like that, we would see junction capacitance show up uh, as one of the measurements. So there's a bunch of stuff that goes on. You'll see a bunch of, uh, I, I mean, there's probably... 50 or more, uh, as you, especially as you watch all three of the test points uh, with respect to ground, things are, are jumping around, it's applying voltage, uh, taking things to ground, just watching what's happening, going through some kind of logic tree to figure out what happened. But the capacitance part of that, uh, what happens somewhere in that testing is that it applies the 5 volts. And it does that for just a few, a fraction of a second, less than a, a tenth of a second. And for a small capacitor, if I just apply the 5 volts with no resistance or anything like that, I'm going to see what pretty much looks like just a, a spike uh, that comes up. And then it 
it does ground it to to discharge the capacitor so on a really uh, small capacitor i'll see something like that uh, on a really large capacitor if i watch it uh, and then what would happen is over here we would see something uh, a few seconds later where it would uh, it would charge up to the the 1.1 volts um, that we talked about earlier and again it discharges when it's done so on a larger capacitor though what we'll see is uh, actually just the small small bump because it does not uh, it's not able to fully charge in that fraction of a second and then over here we will see the uh, the longer charging curve uh, that's a duration of about 1.5 seconds. Um, so that's just the, the, basically this initial pulse is not to really measure, sorry, I've got, uh, got that out of the, the screen there. So this initial pulse is not to really measure anything. So again, apply, if I apply the pulse and it goes all the way up to, uh, to the higher voltage, basically up, up above some certain threshold, um, that looks close to fully charged then i know it's a small capacitor and i use the the method where i charge it up to 1.1 volts uh, and trigger it on the comparator if i don't see much of a bump at all um, i charge it for 1.5 seconds then i feed it into the analog to digital converter measure the voltage and uh, and back calculate so that's the way uh, the way it works actually i've described uh, this and there's some oscilloscope traces and some other information uh, in a book i've put together about the uh, the gm328 tester uh, that's out on amazon uh, you can, it's a, it's an ebook so you can can take a look at it uh, for free uh, for uh, a free a free pre preview uh, of what's in the book uh, and there's other stuff I talked some about uh, measuring inductors how it measures uh, ESR and some of the things that it goes through as it tests um, uh, resistors but it's a very I mean it's a very interesting device uh, very well thought out it's gone through uh, a number of generations and a number of different people um, developing uh, the code that's in it um, Actually, it's been kind of dumbed down in a way. Uh, there's, there's things like a frequency counter that it, it is capable of doing in the firmware. And when you do, if you buy one of these, when you get it, uh, it's literally, most of them, they just come, they're the, the boards that are right here with the, the battery holder. I've mounted mine on a, uh, a piece of wood uh, that I've painted black and, and I've put a battery clip in here just to give it some mechanical stability. But it's a little intimidating to just pull out a circuit board with a readout and um, I mean, you apply a battery and there's really only, uh, there's the, the place where you put the component, there's the push button you use to, to start the test, there's the LED that tells you that, uh, that it's going, and then the, the display on the LCD you, and a place to connect the battery, that's, that's all there is to it. Pretty amazing little device. Uh, and again, one of the most amazing things to me is like the, the capacitance. It's not as straightforward as just, uh, just just going through this logic that we've just talked about to measure capacitance is impressive in itself. But the fact that it, uh, it could also determine that it's a transistor, it's an MPN or a PMP transistor, it's a JFET or a MOSFET, uh, it's an inductor, it's a resistor, and doing the measurements um, that are appropriate for whatever kind of device it determines it to be is uh, is is pretty fascinating. So anyway, I hope that uh, that helps. If uh, that's a question that you've had, and I always appreciate likes and subscribes. And uh, if you've got any uh, questions or observations, uh, feel free to put them down in the comments section. Uh, if there's other things, if you have other questions about the the GM328, I may or may not know the answer. But um, if I do know the answer, I obviously would be uh, be happy to share it. I appreciate you watching, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks.